And now it's recording. But I try shutting so. off. I just hit the screen, don't I? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I don't Mine know. Mine shuts off on me. That's what scares me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'd like to start today off I'm not by much introducing you with. to Matt Courtney. The Adams County area, Quincy, Illinois, Menden area. We have some very, very awesome veterans and Vietnam vets. And I'd like to introduce you to Matt Courtney, who would like to say something special to all of you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mid-America Military Salute. Brought to you by Dave Ulrich, Jeff Jansen, and their uh, their very Wait. grateful vendors that have uh, put this event on, and the dope, the folks that have donated to us. I don't have their names off the top of my head. I know Titan Wheel uh, has been good to the tri-state area and our veterans all along. Uh, but tonight, before we kick this event off, this is. July 5th, 2014, if you don't know, yesterday, obviously it was the 4th of July, but yesterday was uh, 200 years of our nation's national anthem. The national anthem was written on, uh, in 1814 by a young man. We'll get to that. Tonight, what I want to say is... Uh, Forty years ago, a group of veterans came home from the war and were not greeted very well. Were not greeted. They were told to take their uniforms off, go to the other side of the airfield, burn them, and just blend back into society. Since that time, the United States has been trying to give back and make up for that wrong. And that group of men and women I'm talking about is the Vietnam veterans of America. They burned their uniforms, and now the only way you can find them is by their hats. So, if you see, uh, I don't think I've met too, met too many women from the Vietnam era, but the men of Vietnam, they're around, they're here, and uh, next time you see one, stop, take a couple minutes out of your day, take a few seconds out of your day if that's all you've got, and tell them two words. Two words that they taught me when I got off the plane at Bangor, Maine, uh, when I came home from Iraq in 05. And those two words were so simple. So simple. Welcome home. They never heard it. So tonight, in front of you all, I'd like to look to a Vietnam veteran and say, Welcome home, sir. Welcome home. Thank you. got one beside you, take a moment. Uh, I did the run for the wall in 2005, in May 2005, with a group of motorcycles. Me and two other buddies have just gotten home from Iraq, picked up, packed up from the tri-state area, and cruised across the United States to Herndon, West Virginia. That night, we saw some fellas that uh, were with the Run for the Wall organization, and uh, we got to talking to them where we had been, what we had done. They embraced us like we were one of theirs. And we went on about our evening, went ahead and checked in the room, went out and had a few tasty beverages. The next morning we got up, showered up, put our leather on, we're heading on into Washington, D.C. But we had one last thing to do, which is check out of the hotel and pay our tab. It had all been taken care of by those guys that we never got to thank that night before. So, before we turn to got one of these tasty beverages. Raise your glass and salute to those who didn't go home and those that are still here today living with that war every hour, every minute for the rest of their life. Welcome home. Now, I have the honor and the privilege to introduce a friend to vets everywhere. <laughs> Probably one of the nicest guys you could ever meet in your entire life. One of the biggest hearts you ever met. Probably ready to strangle me by now for all the 
Fred I put him through. His family has brought me into their life because he looked at me and saw me as a vet. He's opened up his heart, his home to all of us vets and everybody else. And the only thing he's ever been able to do is say thank you. And the only thing he's ever wanted to do is put on and dedicate something to the men and women active duty, men and women of every war, every veteran, the guy with the biggest heart that I know, wife Melinda, son Jared, Natalie, Natalie, his daughter. They're all some of the greatest people you could ever meet in your entire life. Let me please introduce you to Dave Ulrich. Please come on up. And would you please open the show that you helped create and that you wanted to bring to Quincy and to all the veterans. to the Mid-American Military Salute. This is an event that uh, I wanted to do for a couple of years. Uh, the rain kind of put a damper on some of the things this morning. People coming out, I know there's still more people going to be coming in later. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to tell those of you that don't know, uh, you're, in the, you're in Adams County in the state of Illinois. Adams Wind's County is blowing, the Wind's blowing uh, county. And I would say stand behind our vets more than any other place. Wonderful things uh, with Quincy, uh, with the Commission for Freedom, the honor flights, all those kind of things. Um, this is why uh, this event is about. Um, got this one. Thank you. Very important to take pictures of others. Cheers, Wall, it's recording. Uh, I gotta do the push back and take pictures. Don't hear anything with this, though. Don't worry about it. You can right come here. out there if you want. You can come out here if you want. Go. If, if you're a veteran, I would like you to stand up. If you're already standing, please raise your hand. All my vets, I want to see your hands in the air or stand up for me. Thank you. 
Mighty Spirit was born. He's been on this way around the world for more than 200 years. During our darkest hours, General Washington threw us the Delaware River. Christmas night in 1776, the Navar Revolution, eventually gained separation from the Great Pit from
makes this possible? It's all of you guys. It's our families. It's our friends. We cannot do what we do without you. They want me to tell you what it's like to be a and be gone from our loved ones and families. Well, imagine being in a box. That box has a lot of things. See, we don't do it for the politicians. We do it for what I call the big three for most. And that's not the Celtics or the Heat. That's family, friends, and community. Simple as that. No other. We do it. And we need constant reminders to help us remind and remember that we're still a son, mother, father, friend, etc. Without those, we would feel like we're going to grow inside. Snapshot out here looking for you. Now imagine the look on his face. Now, even though we were both in the box, we knew at that moment that one day we would go home if we were lucky enough to make it. Just by seeing a friendly face, thousands of miles from right here in Quincy. Now, what most of you may not realize is this our job is easy to carry nurse. We go away, we fight, we execute, and we do our job. You, on the other hand, pray. Sleep. You stress until the moment we return. You have to take care of everything that we leave you to do. So with that in mind, I want to stop and I want to say thank you to all the service members and thank you friends that support us while we're gone. Because without you, we can never go in the box, survive the box, or make it out of the box. Have a great weekend, folks. And last never forget those service members and families that paid the ultimate sacrifice. God bless you all. God bless the USA.